Hello everyone, my name is Georgie and my colleague Annie and I are the Gynae Oncology Care Coordinators at the Royal Women's Hospital. We are here today to present our project in Volvo Wound Management. I would like to thank WICMIX for their ongoing support of our project and for assisting us with the necessary funding to better the outcomes for patients with vulval cancer. Vulval or vulva cancer is uncommon and accounts for just 4% of gynecological cancers. It can occur in any part of the external female genitals and mostly develops in the labia majora, minora and perineum. Surgery is the main treatment for cancer of the vulva. This may be performed alone or in combination with radiotherapy and chemotherapy, depending on the stage of the cancer. This project was initiated by the Royal Women's Hospital due to a high rate of wound breakdown in patients after vulval surgery. Our colleagues from other hospitals were consulted and all found to be having the same poor outcomes for many of these patients who had vulval surgery. We also noted that the same methods of wound care post-operatively were being used, such as saline washes, bed rest, and air drying the vulva. Our project heads obtained funding from WICMIX for the project to investigate these high rates of wound breakdown and help improve the outcomes for these patients. Our short-term goals were to develop a staff learning resource, develop patient packs for at-home wound care, and our long-term goals were to improve our consumer experience and reduce rates of wound infection and breakdown post-operatively. We completed a retrospective chart audit of our last 50 patients who had had vulval surgery. We completed a staff survey to grasp how staff felt about their overall confidence and knowledge of vulval wound care and what they felt was attributing to high levels of breakdown and also what they felt would best assist them going forward. We also completed a consumer survey, a literature review and developed staff and consumer resources. From our data analysis, we found many contributing factors that may impact on overall wound healing, such as age, comorbidities. For example, 100% of our last 50 patients had at least one comorbidity that could negatively impact on wound healing. These included diabetes, smoking, and obesity, among others. We looked at length of stay, inconsistent preoperative education, 38% of our women experienced post-operative wound complications, 20% had an unexpected readmission due to complication, and 10% returned to theatre. Some of our major impacts on wound healing are smoking and poor nutrition. A large part of our project was to identify how we could improve these factors for patients and assist them to help reduce the impact that these comorbidities had on their wound healing. We met with our pharmacy department at the Royal Women's Hospital to establish adequate smoking cessation information and education for patients preoperatively. In these preoperative appointments, patients are educated on different smoking cessation products that they can try in the lead up to and during their admission. In terms of nutrition, we establish a fact sheet with our dietetics department to give patients information on nutrition pre and post-operatively to help improve wound healing, such as consuming high protein foods. In preoperative appointments, we establish the need for patients who are having vulval surgery to be referred to a dietitian to assist them and work them up preoperatively. This also includes nutritional testing to determine any deficiencies that may impact on wound healing. Hi, I'm Annie. An online survey was conducted uh, for the staff at the start of the project, which showed nurses felt moderately confident in their ability to care for women after vulva surgery. However, most believed a formal guideline and more nursing education are needed to provide optimal care. A consumer survey showed all patients had their care expectations met and although this is a pleasing result, women did report they would feel more confident performing wound care at home if they were provided with practical equipment. Literature review confirms surgery remains the main treatment for vulval cancer and can be used alone or in combination with radiotherapy and chemotherapy. Women requiring this type of surgery should routinely receive dedicated preoperative 
education and counselling to prepare them both mentally and physically. Surgical side infections are common after vulval surgery and can impact on women's quality of life, leading to extended hospital stay, requiring greater use of healthcare resources and higher financial costs. There are well-known factors that impair wound healing, such as poor nutrition, smoking, alcoholism, stress, increased age, diabetes, infection, and certain medications. Preoperative assessment is needed to identify risk factors that may delay wound healing, and patient education should be provided to manage any lifestyle factors. In terms of wound management, literature review supports the use of vapor permeable dressings to create a moist environment for wound healing. These dressings allow the clinician to visualize the wound and can be left intact for up to five days with minimal interruption to healing tissue. Negative pressure wound therapy has been shown to decrease wound healing time compared to open wound care, which is when the wounds are left uncovered during the healing period. We sought advice from wound clinical nurse consultants across Australia and all agree the main issues after vulval surgery are infection control, pressure reduction and isolation of contaminants, uh, meaning urine and stools. They recommend to consider wound management on a case by case basis and to implement strict bed rest for two weeks and to use negative wound pressure therapy. While we acknowledge the best way to reduce surgical site infection is to cover the wound with a dressing, the location of the vulva and its proximity to the urethra, vagina and anus means it's usually not possible to cover the wounds in um, this area with dressings. Vulval wounds remain commonly managed by open wound care and this project focused on developing resources for consumers and staff who are looking after these type of wounds. Uh, in terms of short-term outcome for staff um, caring after women requiring vulval surgery, we have developed a hospital guideline for vulval wound management. This is available on the women's intranet. An online staff learning resource, which is currently available also on the intranet and we're hoping will be available on the women's um, online education platform called WISE in the coming months to year. Um, and we've also developed a pre-admission clinic template, which is available as a smart text on Epic. For consumers, we have developed online fact sheets about vulval surgery and also a guide to healthy eating. We have also prepared wound care packs, um, which include a peri bottle, which is a squeezable bottle for cleaning the wound, and also a mirror so the women can monitor their wound progress. Um, in the pack, it will also include written material and um, support and contact uh, numbers as well. In, in terms of longer term outcome, we hope to see a reduction in rates of wound infection and breakdown in 12 months time and improved consumer experience. We look forward to reviewing the data and reporting our findings at that stage. We also plan to share our findings and resources with colleagues state and nationwide and hope to work towards developing a national standard for vulval, vulval wound management. Thank you.